right, you guys, we are back. Welcome back to Behind the Bikini. And we are on episode, is it 38? I didn't even look. We 38. always look before. And then we're on 38. 38. Okay. <laughs> I, I got it. <laughs> um, so before we get into this, you guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all the fun things when uh, it comes to YouTube. So that helps us out, helps you out, and turns on turn on those notifications so you know when we actually put up a new episode, all of the fun things. Okay, so how are you doing today? <laughs> I am good. It's still early here. It's another 6.30 a.m. or so nothing's really happened yet. How about you? Yeah. Well, it's it, for me, it's early because, you know, I'm a late late night person. So, you know, I was up till, I don't know, 12, 12.30, something like that last night. That's typical for me. So it's still early for me. <laughs> I've got my coffee. I did have my <laughs> breakfast, all that. You know, I'm at my parents right now. So that's so why it's a little, a little bit of a different setup than last time. So, And where do your um, parents live? Upstate New York. Upstate New York. So okay. if you're familiar with it all, it's actually really nice. So the last, so I started doing this last year because they took the Pittsburgh Pro and the New York Pro and put them one week apart. So it used to be two weeks apart. There was a week in between. But because there's one week apart, now what I can do is I can go to Pittsburgh Pro because I'm in Northern Virginia. So I go up to Pittsburgh Pro, I go to my parents in upstate New York, and then I go down to New York Pro, and then I go back home. So it's like this big circle, and it works Smart. out great. I can you know, I can still work from here, um, spend some time with my family, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, it was actually, we, my parents had this, this boat and they love going out fishing on this little lake by the house and all that kind of stuff. So I went out with them yesterday. Beautiful day, but the wind was ridiculous. That's <laughs> so like, I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, ugh. I was like, so we stayed out there for a couple of hours and it was nice and everything. But like, if the wind was gone, it was like 76 degrees. It was gorgeous, like a beautiful day. So when I was here last year, it was cold. Last year it was cold. So this, then last night it rained, which isn't a huge deal. We just sat on, sat out on the deck. Like I live, my parents live in the middle of nowhere. So it's literally, there's nothing out here at all. And it's like one of those things where I was worried about the cell signal and stuff and the internet getting on here but it worked out really good for our live last night amy jumped on the live last night so um it, i was like okay we're gonna be good for the podcast tomorrow <laughs> so and i you know i'm in my old high school bedroom i'm literally in my bedroom right now so um it's just it's it's just kind of funny it's like you know it's it's 20 25 years removed but it's still still the same <laughs> very nostalgic <laughs> yeah well in my my hometown too like it's almost like it's stuck in the 70s and 80s because mm -hmm. this area was built on IBM. So IBM was what really founded this whole town. And IBM left this area in like the 90s. So nothing has progressed progressed since then. So literally every time I come home, there's no new buildings, there's no nothing. It's all the same, it's all the same houses, all the same businesses, all the same everything since I was a kid. So kind of I look around. It is. It's weird. It's almost like, and I hate to say, make it sound like it's, it's like a negative thing, but I look around and I'm like, a lot of the homes are like dilapidated and stuff like that. You know, it's almost, it's like one of those, those Hollywood movies where the people like leave the town and then they come back, you know, 20 years later and the whole thing is falling apart. Like that's what yeah. it looks like. Hmm. And I'm just like, mm, my parents' house is great. <laughs> Like they've kept up. My dad, my dad is a construction worker. He's been, he's been in construction his whole life. He built this house from the ground up, literally put the first nail in kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's a labor of love from, from him since he was, since, you know, I was, I was four years old, that kind of thing. So. Um, wow. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's cool. Like he, he's always got something he's tinkering with. Like we have a back deck and he made an elevator on the back deck to go from the deck down to the ground and stuff like that. Like just, he's just, he's very like mechanical with his brain. Is he uh, retired now? Yeah. Yeah. He just retired last year. Yep. So I saw that you um, got your peeps too. I did. I got my peeps. Does that heal your childhood trauma? <laughs> I don't know about healing, but uh, uh, like it's, it's come full circle. <laughs> That was cute. I had, I, I had peeps I, I yesterday imagine him too, recording yeah. you and like watching you eat the peep. Like, is it gonna be yes. worth it? Is it gonna be worth yeah. it? <laughs> have I have I healed my daughter's pain? Yes. <laughs> He's trying. It's dying. Give us, give I was us like, some credit. I know. I'm like, I can't believe you saved the peeps for me. So that's so funny. Yeah, for that's very sweet. Know, yeah, my dad stole my my last peep when I was a child. I grew up very um 
like we were on, you know, food stamps and government assistance and things like that. So whenever we got anything special, like it was like we savored that special thing, you know. And my dad, my dad ate my last peep when I was in like fifth grade, and it, it traumatized me for the rest of my life. <laughs> so he saved one for her, and then he recorded her eating it, and she posted it. Yeah, it was very sweet. It was very very yes. Cool. Yep. So here we are, you know, like, like he said, 10 years later, actually, it's more like, it's more like 30 years later, but yeah. uh, he's like 10 years later, we've made up for this. <laughs> That's his own story. He's telling himself of like, it hasn't been that long that you've been dealing been with that long. this. Yeah. I know this pain and this trauma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But, but the funny part about it is my husband says all the time, he's like, your dad really traumatized you with that whole peep situation because I'm so protective of my food. Like so protective of, I get so mad when he eats my food. I'm like, that's yeah. like, you know, like, you know, I, that, I'm the that, same that's way. my food. Yeah. yeah. I'm the same way. I mean, I grew up with my mom and she did, she was bipolar, schizophrenic and anorexic. So we never had food in the house ever. Oh, yeah. So like everybody, every time we go out to sushi, everybody's like, do you want to like share? Nope. Nope. Don't nope. even look at my plate. I don't even want to share a plate with you. You know, like at sushi where they bring them out on the big boats. I always say, I want mine on my own plate right here in front of me. Like, wow, you really don't like to I'm like, nope, don't touch my food. Don't look at it. Don't even, don't even be around it. Like <laughs> that's always, I always refer back to that scene in uh, friends with the, the, the gif, the meme with Joey, Joey doesn't share food. Have you seen that? No, I'm like, always it's, it's like, Joey doesn't share food. But That's I know me. Joey's a, a food guy. That's us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 I don't share food. Don't share no. food. Yeah. The whole, the whole, the whole episode is him going on a date with this girl and she keeps eating off of his plate at the restaurant and he get, kept getting mad about it. And he finally just screamed at her and just said, Joey doesn't share food. <laughs> Yes. If I was on that date, there would not be a second date. No, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Sorry. Actually, it was the first date that I went on with Dan, he was like, he's like, when I knew you were a keeper is when you ordered all your own food and dessert and you wanted a steak and potatoes and everything. I was, I was like, yeah, this girl can eat. I'm like, I want yeah. my food. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's what I knew. That's what I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'm mm -hmm. surrounded by women though. Like my mother-in-law, like eats like a bird. Like they can just share yeah. like that. Every time they go out, hit uh, Drew's dad and mom, like share a plate. And I'm like, what? I don't, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> no, I don't, Weird. I don't, I don't share. Yeah. I don't Me share. Neither. Because the other thing is, if I don't eat all of it, it's going home with me as leftovers. And yeah, I don't share absolutely. leftovers either. I don't share yeah. leftovers either. It's in, it's in the refrigerator until I want it. <laughs> I remember I so when bad. we used to go out all the time and Drew, it, like I would bring home leftovers and I would go and like get them and, he, and they'd be gone. And I would look at Drew and be like, where's my food? He's like, I ate it. <laughs> Why? I wanted it. I, I know. <laughs> Dan just did that a couple of weeks ago. So we've been doing this thing on Saturdays. He'll go to Cheesecake Factory and bring home dinner from, from work because I can eat that stuff because I can get the skinny delicious stuff and it fits in my macros, right? So I, I had the turkey burger and I had the... um the salad. And I was saving the salad for the following day because I had lettuce wraps. So I was like, I want the salad tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I put the salad in the refrigerator. I go to eat it the next day and it's gone. And I was like, Dan, it's like, where's the salad? <laughs> He's like, I thought it was mine. No, it was not yours. It was mine. <laughs> I thought it was mine, like, but no, I didn't order it. It was mine. Yeah, I know. He thought it was the salad that came with his, his nachos. I'm like, okay, because salad comes with nachos. <laughs> two plus two doesn't equal four on that one. No. <laughs> no, but I will we eat it to him because he got, I know he got me two orders of lettuce wraps. I didn't ask for two orders. He got me two orders. So I had an order of lettuce wraps still left in the refrigerator. So it was okay. I wasn't super mad at him for eating my salad. I was just ready for my salad and I wasn't, I was expecting it to be there and it wasn't. Balance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but anyway, oh so, my God. oh Lord. So yeah, this week has been a little bit all over the place, but um, I just got my cycle yesterday. So okay. how are you feeling on your, on your whole situation there? Have you gotten anything? Nothing? No, 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 that's not happening. It's fine. <laughs> like, cheers. It's like, cheers to that. Cheers to, no cheers, cheers to getting lean. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Up. No, but we, I did just get labs back and the labs are beautiful, like beautiful. Good. So can be, Good. could it not be happier about that? And it is what it is, you know? So I, yeah. it's not that big of a deal because, you know, we, we don't want kids. So it, it is a big deal in terms of like bone density and things like that. But we're monitoring that and everything's fine right now. So I feel really good. And, you know, we, we do the best we can. I, I put on, what, 18 pounds above stage weight this off season. So it wasn't mm. for lack of trying, that's for sure. But yeah, you know, yeah. it is what it is. So I, I think to get it back, I'm going to have to stop 
you know, competing. Like, you know, yeah. I just train too heavy and I'm training too frequently. And, you know, it's that, that is an added stress on the body that, you know, it just doesn't allow the period to come. I remember when I got my period back last time, it was definitely from pulling back on everything. And I'm just not mm-hmm. in a position to do that right now. And that's okay. So yeah. um, labs are good. So I'm really, really, really happy about that. And stress is getting lower and lower and lower. I spent a good amount of time yesterday on dealing with the Florida house. And like, we had all these open things that were going on with like landscaping and this and that. So everything feels really, really good right now. Just kind of cruising. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we keep this wave. My cortisol was great on my labs too. Oh, so nice. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I just had a consult with a girl the other day and she was, she, you know, she comes from a family that does bodybuilding and she looks at her mom and her mom, um, her mom is the typical like skinny bikini competitor for lack of a better term. Yeah. And so she's like concerned. She wanted to do wellness because she's like, I don't want to get that that small. I don't want it. She's like, I'm worried about losing my period and all this kind of stuff. I said, that's not like a must. You know what I mean? Like, like it happens, obviously, clearly. I said, but but it's not always the case, you know, and, and you, it's bikini isn't a skinny show anymore. You know what I mean? It's just not. So not, not um, at all. Yeah. The more I talk to her, she's like, wow. Okay. She's like, well, I just saw, I've seen my mom do it this way. And I just thought that's the way it was supposed to be. She's like my, you know, my, her dad or stepdad or something like that also trains guys and things like that. And she's like, I just never wanted to do what they were doing. She's like, that's one of the reasons why I'm consulting with a coach. She's like, cause I never wanted to go to that. She's like, so I just assumed I needed to do wellness cause I never wanted to be that teeny tiny little girl. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I was like, you know, I was like we go where your body is supposed to go. Not diet you down to under a thousand calories, all that kind of stuff. That's not what we do. Super yeah. intuitive though, because what she's saying is spot on. I mean, her mother you know, putting together her age was probably in the age of bikini when it was the who's skinniest competition. And then the guys yep. have to get freaking peeled. So she's looking at that side too. So absolutely. Yeah. I yep. totally Well, and even, and I can't remember, I think, I think she said her stepdad, I can't remember who it was. She said her uncle, it might've been her uncle. She said her uncle was the one to tell her to go interview coaches because he was like, I just don't know how it works for, for the women. You know what I mean? Good like, for he's uncle. Good with the guys. Correct. Good, That's right. Yeah. I said, exactly. I was like, and I say the same thing. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and say that I, I'm going to do everything for the guys. Cause that's not my thing. That's not my wheelhouse. It's not what I want to do. You know what I mean? So I, if you were a men's physique competitor coming to me, I'd tell you to go find a guy to help you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a good move. <laughs> good for uncle Bob. We're to say uncle Bob. <laughs> right. Uncle Bob. There you go. I like it. I like it. That's an easy one. Yeah. Um, I have, I have a grandpa Bob, so you know, that works. I have an <laughs> uncle like, Bob. Like the, there you go. Awesome. And my dad's name is Rob. There's too many Robs, Bobs. Oh, wow. Okay, See, yeah, so of... before we get on to our topic, I ha- we have to talk okay. about something. Okay. Oh, boy. We have to, oh, no. We have to t- <laughs> no, we have to talk about <laughs> okay. average, okay. average potato. Average potato. <laughs> How the hell did you find that? Where, where so I was from? searching, I was trying to log potatoes. So I, so I was searching for potatoes in my fitness pal and I'm like clicking on them because I'm trying to find one that has grams. Right. So I click on that one and it says, it says average potato. I was like, bro, most of them, most of them say medium potato, believe it or not. If you go look and look through white potatoes, most of them say me, medium potato, but that was an average potato. And I just started cracking up. I was like, what even is an average potato? Like, Well, I've seen the medium ones and then they give dimensions of like yes, length, those width too. and height of a potato. Yes. Like, okay. Yeah. Hold on one second. Let me <sighs> just, instead of putting it on the scale in grams, let me just go ahead and take out my yes. tape measure. Here we go. Well, the same thing with corn on the cob because I went to go log corn on the cob and they do the same thing. They're like a medium ear is like, it's like, so I keep thinking about penis sizes with all of this, but a medium corn on the cob is from four and a half to five and a half inches. And I'm just like, so that's, that's a medium, huh? <laughs> oh my God. We are unhinged. <laughs> I every everything is a phallic symbol to me. Corn on the cup. (laughs) I'm just that's my mind. This is what this is what happens when you're over the age of 40, by the way. Your mind goes to everything sexual. I'm sorry. It's just even if I don't say it, it's there. I can't wait. It's right here. (laughs) Seems entertaining. It absolutely is. I'm in my fitness palace and freaking corn of the cob sizes. And I'm gonna drink my tea. Yeah. She's like, I need a break before something else comes out of my mouth. I'm like, I need to just throw wash it away. Your, wash your mouth out with soap, not tea, okay? That's what you're supposed <laughs> oh to do. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to talk about the average potato. So hashtag uh, one media banana and hashtag average potato. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, we got a comment on our our channel, by the way, about the about the products for the um, for the banana, the medium banana. We should have and... pictures of us pictures of us eating medium bananas on posing suits. <laughs> with, with, the, with the posing suit having a banana on it. Hey, I know someone yeah. who might be able to make those. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Ready. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my God. And as soon as I saw the comment, I was like, yep. Mm -hmm. That's oh my thing. God. My face hurts from <laughs> smiling. So I know, second. Right? We're burning calories. It's okay. We're both in prep. So we're burning a lot of calories right now. This is, this is adding to our meat. <laughs> Jamie, I didn't do my hit this week because I keep laughing on my podcast and I'm burning hard. lots of calories. Oh my God. So funny. Oh, I can't. I can't. Okay. So anyway, so about those average potatoes. Um, yeah. Okay. Got yeah, it. average potato. Yep. Got so it. we're gonna just have a whole bunch of hashtags for these random foods that you that you should be tracking differently. It's okay. We need a big t-shirt line, so we need we need options. Yes, that's right. Different seasons, right? That's Different it. seasons. That's yeah, it. we got it. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so I had I had my house, myself some average potatoes this week. <laughs> so and some corn, on the, some sweet. some medium corn on the cob. You know, no big deal. So accurate. You're doing such a great so, job. Completely accurate. So accurate. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like going back to, again, like just, just basic stuff, like take the corn on the cob and cut the corn off the cob and weigh the corn. Like what? Not hard. Not hard to Not do. Hard. Not, Not hard, hard to at do. all. Yeah. Anyway, I, I I did do that. I just for shits and giggles, and I can't remember exactly what the difference was, but I did that. I weighed it. It was completely different from weighing it versus what they said, like a medium, like corn in the cob would have been. You know what I mean? Completely oh, for different. For sure. For so sure. I was like, well, oh my god, this that's is the problem. Close. It's so relative. Like, what does that even mean? It's just yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. And, and other news prep is is humming along. I was doing okay, like as far as the weight situation, but then my cycle so now i'm like okay great so i gotta check in tomorrow let's hope that my weight drops because it Mine's definitely went stuck. up yeah mine yeah. was went down to 135 now i'm up at 137 just kind of cruising at 137 but i feel like so inflamed i'm just but just pushing right now but i'm yeah. uh, i feel i feel good for pushing so yeah well that's another thing too to talk about because i you know i have a client right now and she's um a couple weeks off from a show and she does a ton of activity during her her daily life, right? And her activity was up last week. I've got her on a ton of calories. Like she's over 2,700 calories a day and she's two weeks out. And, um, you know, I'm looking at her steps yesterday or last week and her steps last week went up by like 10K a day, like a lot. And so she was talking to me about, she's like, oh, so on these days when I'm going to be super active, can I just eat more? And I said, nope. I said, you need to not be super active because what's happening is, is your body's not recovering. I said, it's not yeah. just about, it's not just replacing the activity with calories. It's also the recovery and the inflammation of your body. I said, when she's got, she's worried about her stomach. I said, one of the reasons why your stomach is looking the way it is, I said, is because your body's not recovering. You're not giving it a chance to actually use the food that you're eating. I said, well, and you have to keep fit feeding her to keep her full and that we absolutely like, we yeah yes i was like you know there's there we're not going to fill your glutes out if you're constantly burning through everything and not resting you know like you need, you're two weeks out you need to not be doing 27 k steps a day plus your workouts i'm like <laughs> you need to slow, slow. I, had told, I literally put in her check-ins i said sit your ass down <laughs> yeah like, that's to stop moving so much so she listens and that's the she mentality listens. of some competitors especially the closer they get to stage it's like i need to be doing more and it's like no this is now the time that we're the work's done we need to be pulling back and letting the body recover Absolutely. and get fresh and fill out for the show like peak yep. week is not this like you know this magical thing that happens if anything it's just like you're resting and you're just trying to Absolutely. let the food stick you know that's right yeah i was like it's it's not and, and she said she's like can we just uh you know add more food i was like no <laughs> i was like you need to stop moving just sit down <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah yep yeah. so you know sometimes sometimes you got to let your body just give give it a break you know what i yeah. mean and you know like you were just saying about the whole the whole period situation too it's like you know it's not going to happen until you give your body a break so you know you, you yeah. deal with it <laughs> You, you've got to be real with yourself, right? Like, it's yeah. like, I know it's right. not coming back because of these things. So it's, you know, right. it's just not saying I'm broken and it's never, no, it's because I'm unwilling to give up my sport right now, which is causing right. stress on my body, which is not allowing a cycle to come. So it is what it is. As long as I'm healthy and I'm feeling okay, then 
we push, but that's why it's important Absolutely. to keep up with labs and things like that. So I can make that decision soundly. Um, but it's just, you know, being real with yourself. So people just create those stories that they tell themselves and they just believe them and yeah. they put themselves into a, a worse position. Yeah, absolutely. Which that's actually a pretty good segue into our topic today because we're going to talk about um, the different looks on stage. Um, this was a question. This is a question that we get quite a bit. People are asking about what's the difference be between being like full and flat and conditioned and this and that, the other thing. So um, <clears throat> I've actually got a PowerPoint that I'm going to pull up that I did for my Cuties Conquering the Stage presentation two years ago. And we're going to go through this. And we're just going to kind of break it down uh, step by step. Let me pull the presentation. I'd just like to take a moment to welcome our new channel partners. Proses. If you are unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now, click on the link, go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal, been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique? Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're going to find, you're going to find really high quality pure supplementation and one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues so being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues oh worth its weight in gold go check them out click on the link in my description box below use the code cuties10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises they're always putting out some amazing promotions let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel now Go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out prozis.com. Presentation up so you guys can see it. There we go. Beautiful. And we were going to do, uh, no, this is the presentation one, right? We we're going to do pictures a different way. Okay, perfect. So we're just going to go through these slides. <clears throat> And just kind of talk about each one of these. But what I did here when I put this presentation together is I pulled photos from the girls that all went pro at nationals this particular year. So every one of these girls in these photos <clears throat> were amateurs, but they're now pros. So <clears throat> a lot of them have competed since. Um, and a lot of them, and the reason why I did this too is because even despite the fact that we're pulling out you know, things that we need to critique them on. They still won their pro cards looking the way that they did here. So they are still pros. I try to tell people this all the time too. Like I get people that that message me a lot asking me to critique their physique that are in the NPC, that are amateurs. And I, I tell them, I said, listen, if you're not one of my clients, I'm not giving you critiques because I don't critique people unless they're in the pro league because I feel like once you're a pro athlete, that's kind of like your, your rite of passage kind of deal. You know what I mean? And it's kind of open game for everyone. Um, but I don't know. I just For me, it just gets a little bit touchy when I start trying to um, critique girls that are, again, that I don't work with and that are amateurs. I just think that that's just crossing Absolutely. the line for me. Personally. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. So just to put that out there, just so you know, every one of these photos that I've got in the slide, these ladies are all now pros, okay? So this is what, what look they brought to the stage that won them their pro cards, okay? So to start out, this first one is depleted, which if you read the slide here, it says to used up the supply or resources of, it's very simply, you don't have enough food, water, et cetera, in your system, you look used up. So this is what we were just talking about, right? Where you're, this girl, who knows what she actually did going into the show, but whatever she ate, she didn't either didn't eat enough or it didn't stick like we were just talking about. So looking at this photo, like, do you what, do you see what I see as far as why I pulled this photo? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's got no pop to her physique. We see a lot of mm -hmm. rib cage and yes, yeah, she just looks worn out, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely see what you're seeing. Yeah. So when, if she had enough pop to her. She, if she wasn't depleted here, we wouldn't see all that rib cage that we're seeing poking through there. We'd probably see a little bit more fullness in her shoulders, a little bit more glute pop there too, those kinds of things, you know, but this to me is just somebody who didn't completely fill that physique out. Now, again, it was good enough that day to win a pro card, but I'm guessing that her feedback that day was probably that she needed to fill out some more. You know, yeah, and I think she's. I think she's actually got more muscle here than what she showed based on how depleted her physique actually looks, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go to the next slide. So the next slide that I pulled up is conditioning, and I believe I believe you have some photos. We're going to pull up of you for this one too, Jordan. So, uh, but anyway, what I said here was the composition of the body that accentuates muscle look and proportion. You either have not enough muscle density or too much. Um, most usually, you're not going to be conditioned enough. So, the girl on the these girls were both in the overall for wellness. Um, the girl on the left has actually more muscle 
than the girl on the right. But when you're looking at the conditioning, this is what we're talking about with that pop of the, of the glutes, everything like that. The conditioning of the girl on the right, the conditioning is perfect. Um, the girl on the left, she's a little over conditioned. She's a little hard. She's a little grainy and she doesn't have that fullness again when we're looking at the conditioning here. Now, what else do you see in the, the disparity with the, the, the conditioning here? I just think that the girl on the right has perfect, perfect, perfect conditioning. I mean, I think the girl yep. on the left is just a little too sharp back there. She just needed to soften yep. up that up a little bit. Um, what I'm, what I am seeing on the girl on the right, which is more of a posing thing, is those triceps are just popping. But it's because she's yep. so straight and like locking those arms out. But yeah, I mean, beautiful mm -hmm. conditioning from the back. Yep. Yep. And that's you know, when I was I was actually at the sh or when I was watching the show, there was people. They were saying like the girl on the left should have won because the size is bigger. You know, when you're looking at them size comparison, she has more wellness shape on the bottom. But you have to remember that that's not completely what is being judged when we're talking about um, when we're talking about uh, wellness. Go ahead. I think the girl on the left looks more balanced from top to bottom, which is yeah. not part of the criteria. They need to be yeah. perfectly imbalanced, which you could see from the girl on the right, you know, smaller yeah. upper body compared to lower. Yep, absolutely. So um, did you have one of your photos for this one or did, did you want to keep going on the slides? Yeah, you could pull up um, now the comparison between, so what I did is I pulled up Junior USAs, so that would be more of a two conditioned look. Okay, let me go here. Yep, that one right here. So, yep, yep. Full disclosure: this I did take a diuretic for this show. Um, this was with my old coach. This was way before Jamie. So this was in 2020. Um, I'm going in reverse because the physique just kept getting worse. So I started with uh, Tampa Pro and won the overall. There's photos of this in a little bit, and then we went to juniors. So my feedback at Tampa was, "Don't change a thing," and wait till you see the comparison of the photos. But my coach gave me an extra hour of cardio. I think I was on three hours of cardio at this point and very, very, oh very God. low. Food. And took a diuretic wow. before this show. So wow. as, yeah, so as you can see, literally I was I was in the towards the center when the comparison round came out and I immediately went far left. Uh Sandy was mm -hmm. judging the show, but you can even see like the masseter in my face. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah. it's just way too depleted. This is way too much conditioning. You can literally see every muscle, every bone in my body. Um this is not the look they're going for. Remember, yeah. bikini is supposed to be round and healthy and beautiful and attainable. And if you look at this, this is none of these things. This is skeleton. Let's just see. I think it's, I it's this way the other way for your, nope, that's makeup. Sorry, wrong way. <laughs> I <can't be. laughs> swipe, swipe left. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so there's your back shot for that one. <laughs> and similar to what I was talking about with the, with the wellness girl. I mean, look at my triceps here. I mean, not just like way too much, you know, my triceps yeah. are, are literally overdeveloped of my posterior delts here. As you can see my quads, like I had a lot of quads when I first started competing. I've done a lot of work on those. Yeah, this is just, this is too much. You know, nobody's yeah. going to look at this and be like, wow, I want to look like that. But, yeah. you know, and we, then, we lose the fullness. I, we, lo we lose the fullness everything. in your glutes and everything too. Yeah, like, you you're, you know, one of the things you have that is, you know, kind of not unique to you, but one of your assets is that you have really good projection of your glutes. And we see none of that right here, you know? Yeah. And at this point, I knew nothing about, like, this is my first year competing, Drew, and I knew mm -hmm. nothing at this time. And all we were worried about was tie in, 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 tie in. And it's like we sacrifice the rest of the physique over not even getting a full tie in here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so it's, yeah. it wasn't a good look. I literally just took the diuretic and, and I lost all my fullness. Mm, you gotta love it. Diuretics, people always think that you have to cut water and everything going into a show. And actually, it can, most of the time, it can hurt you more than help you. Yes. You know, yep. so. Yep. Uh, and then if you want to pull up um, North Americans, so, well, actually, okay. let's wait, let's wait, let's wait on that one. Okay. Till, uh, okay. Till the water. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. You just let me know when to pull them up and I will. Okay. Um, let's see. So here's flats. So this was, I mean, this was you with the diuretic too, right here, you know? So um, <clears throat> if you're well, if you're not well hydrated, your muscles will likely look flat and it will appear as though you've lost size when all you're really short on is liquids, not muscle. One gram of carbs can um, bind up to three grams of water. So if you look at these two physiques here, um, which one is flat to you? Left. Yeah, clearly, clearly yeah. flat, you know, yeah. um, the girl on the right is the one that won the overall. I believe she won the overall in women's physique at the show as well. So she did um, the women's physique and yeah. figure at the show. Yep. Yep. So it's pretty clear 
this, there's a significant difference between the two, the two physiques. And if, if you're watching this and you don't see this, that's okay. That's why we're going through all of this. You know what I mean? Like this takes a trained eye to be able to see this. When you're looking at that girl on the left, you can just see how her abs are really washed out. That's the first place you can see it as far as the flatness is concerned. Um, she looks very, very smooth in the front versus the girl on the right. You can see the definition in the abs and all of that. Same thing with the legs. Look at the legs and how the cuts in her quads are on the right versus the left and the shoulders, the fullness, the pop in the shoulders on the, on the right versus the left. Um, that's where you see that flatness. The girl on the left, I don't I mean, I don't know what her protocol was, but she likely didn't carve up or she didn't, she cut water or something um, that made her, that made her not feel out. Yeah. And, and flat, we're also considering that the athlete is conditioned. So when they are in prime conditioning, like that look, in the lower, like uh, what my eye goes to between these two photos, just to put everybody's eyes on what we're talking about is the lower body, right? So look at the yeah. the quads between the two. The girl on the mm -hmm. left has no lines, you know, but the girl yep. on the right has that pop and that that those def that definition. But the girl on the left can still be, we don't know for sure, we're, we're basing it off of, of what, what we're seeing, but she could be con very conditioned, like yes. zero body fat, but she just didn't put in the water, sodium and carbs to help fill out that muscle and give it that pop. The girl on the yes. right could have looked like the girl on the left two or three days before this shot, but she did yep. the proper protocol to fill out that muscle belly so that it has that pop to it. Yep. And this is where having a coach that understands what they're looking at is important because their protocols could be very, very similar. You know, I mean, they could have done almost the exact same thing going in and maybe one of the girls took a diuretic and the other one didn't, you know, it's, it's very, it could be that, that, that much of a change. And this is what you get in the discrepancy of the looks. So, you know, that's why you gotta know what you're looking at more than anything else. Yes. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to the next one. Watery. So I think you've got a photo for this one as well. So, um, Holding water from stress, too many carbs, not drinking enough water, no movement, etc. So when you look at this girl, and actually when you see more photos of this girl too, she had quite a bit of lower ab distension. Um, you can just see it's almost like there's a there's like a film of water over her whole body. So when we're talking about watery, it looks like she's almost got a layer of water on top of her, in between her muscle and her skin. Um, it's just not shrink wrapped. You know, when those of you that, that have worn um, waist trainers, things like that in the gym, when you go into the gym, initially you look like normal, right? Then you go and you put your waist trainer on, you go do cardio and you come out and you got veins and you're shrink wrapped because of that waist trainer, right? That's essentially what you're doing when you get on stage. So looking watery is what you look like prior to putting on that, that waist trainer and getting all that water to come off, right? If that makes sense. If you can relate it to an everyday kind of, kind of look, right? So what else do you see here? Everything you're saying, and I think, you know, some people would say, well, is she watery or is she, does that still body fat? And that's, that's mm -hmm. kind of the question always, you know, when you're as a coach coaching someone that maybe you're not there in person, that's a very hard call, you know, but if I am yes. in person, it's, it's, we do the finger test, you know, we're feeling around on the, on the body to feel if we're feeling that film of water or if we're feeling yep. those crunchies, which is more of that body fat. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where you have to distinguish, you know, is it water or is it body fat. And most of the time you're going to know if it's water just based off these things. Is the client very stressed? Did they not, mm -hmm. you know, do what they were supposed to do with their water sodium? It's kind of, it's kind of easy to put to, to that together. If they're appearing watery, their cycle, yep. you know, things like that. Yes. Um, I do have photos of, of a look like this. This so one would me, be North American. Okay. So, so yeah, and it was the same thing. It was the same thing with me. Like when I, when I was in Hawaii, that was my feedback. The judge was like, you actually looked look like you're leaner than what you showed. And that was because I had my period. So yeah. this is your North, North Americans. Yeah. So this is in 2020. <clears throat> this was a week uh, later from junior USA's. Um, yep. So what I did is I was told I was way too lean. So I just started eating like an asshole, basically. Mm. Until North Americans. Now, I am very temperature sensitive. So I'm going to also caveat this. This was 2020 in the tent at North Americans and it was about 90 degrees, very humid and raining. We were dropped yes. off in the tent in the parking lot in a bus and there was water all over the floor. You couldn't even sit down on the floor backstage. I, I got dropped off in this bus and a girl was coming off stage and she literally had her tan and makeup running down her face. And I was like, oh, I'm fucked because I am oh, so no. temperature sensitive. So this is, this is watery, this is stress. This is me eating like an a-hole for a week trying to fill out. This is me not having the temperature that I am used to on stage. So this is watery. 
for mm-hmm. me, you know, compared to that junior USA look, you could tell it a lot in the back shot as well. Well, yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're looking at the two different looks, you can see the difference really Look at the really difference in the, in the glutes, yeah. you know? So yeah. let me, yeah. actually, I can click back so that you can take a look at both. So this is the North Americans and there's, I mean, there's a, that's a significant difference. I mean, that to me, when I see your, your, your arms, your abs, mm-hmm. everything, that's a huge difference versus, so, yeah. and yes, yep. absolutely here. Yep. It's almost like you can see it's, it's, it's almost like squishy. Like it's almost like I could go and go like push into it and it would stay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it feels yeah. like, like when you, when you are holding water, like it kind of feels like a ripple effect. Like you can just do this to the skin and it feels like there's kind of water underneath there. But then if you do that, yeah. you don't really feel the water, but you're pulling and you feel like it's like rice krispies. That's just a mm-hmm. little bit of the, of the fat molecules left. Yep. Yep. So, and it's, and it's, and once you get to this level, like you, you understand it a little bit better until you've felt it and until you felt it on your own body, does it, this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're trying to show you visually, but if you've ever competed for any period of time, you've probably done one of these looks at one point or another. <laughs> and so, you know, you know what it feels like, you know what I mean? I definitely but, do. Like, yeah. But this is where it's important to have a coach that understands feedback, because if you go get feedback with this look, the judges can say mm-hmm. one of two things. They could say, get more conditioned, so drop body mm-hmm. fat, where you just saw a week ago, I had no body fat on me. Yep. Or if they knew, they would say, hey, she's holding water, like you just need to pull all the water off of her. But they're going to yeah. say more conditioning. And if the coach doesn't understand that feedback, which my old coach didn't, which is why I showed up to Junior USA the way I did, then you're going to come with a, a completely wrong look again. So that's mm-hmm. why it's hard to, you know, as you know, keeping in mind, the judges are going to say what they see, but they're not a coach. So they don't know what it right. takes to get there. So it's right. it's dissecting that feedback and really understanding what they're trying to, the look they're trying to achieve, what the client yes. is presenting with and how to take that client from A to B of what the judges yes. are asking for. Well, and clarifying things too, a great example was this weekend in Pittsburgh, right? So um, Yulia got her feedback and prior to going into finals, I was standing there with Yulia and, Julie, and Jamie and talking about how, you know, I, I felt like cause she was a little hard. Her conditioning was over, was over the line. And I said, listen, I said, to be honest with you, I said, I thought, I thought her glutes were super full. I thought her shoulders were super full and her waistline was tight. I said, where I saw the conditioning being a problem was her hamstrings. I said, and what I'm looking at is I'm saying like, when we're looking at wellness competitors, they look full and round and bubbly because they have more muscle in those areas. I said, I think Yulia just needs more hamstring muscle, period. I think if she just adds some more muscle, um, I think that'll help with the softness there versus looking quite so, so like hamstring cords down, down her legs, you know? And so after the show, we went and talked to Etla and she told, and she told uh, Jamie and, and uh, Yulia she need, that Yulia needs more size, specifically her legs, not her glutes, but her legs and really kind of all over a little bit more on the shoulders, that kind of thing, but specifically on her legs. And Jamie was like, oh, you were right, Sean. I was like, yes, I was. <laughs> I was like, you know, and that's what get, that'll give that fullness. Again, breaking it down, it's one thing to say she needs more muscle, right? But it's another thing to say, well, the reason why she needs more muscle is so she doesn't have those really tight hamstring cords. You know, those are, yeah. those are very, two, two very different um, things. And again, Jamie asked like three different times specificity as far as what Ethelo wanted to see and what Sandy wanted to see and everything like that from backstage as far as what they wanted to see from her. So it wasn't just like, okay, what does she need to have done? Okay, cool. Let's go. No, it's she, uh, the Jamie asked three times, like, what? okay, so we want to see specifically this, right? Just as you get the exact, the exact feedback. And again, that, that that comes from experience of knowing how to talk to the judges, knowing what they're looking for, and and again, getting very cl- very clear and clarity on what they what they want to see. Yeah, know? because it's I think people are afraid to re ask a question because they're afraid yeah. to you know not argue, but I'm, I'm not looking thinking of the right word right now, but they want that. They want to keep yeah. like, that open line of communication. Like Sandy loves questions. I just, we, we just went out to dinner with her a few weeks ago. She was like, I love when I learned from the coaches of like what the terminology is and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. She's like, I don't know the coaching terminology. I can only yes. say what I see on stage. Um, so yes. it, it, it's good for them too, because they learn about the athlete and, you know, a little bit about the coaching and, you know, and I've done that with Jamie too, myself backstage, you know, Jamie says one thing and she's like, no, no, no. She looks at me, take your robe off pose. And then I'll pose and she will be like, <laughs> Uh, okay, no, I, I didn't mean that. I I want this, you know. So yeah. that it's that's why getting that feedback in person is so important. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, okay, so we went through watery. Let's go to the next one. Soft. Oops, I went too far. Sorry. Let me go back. Okay, soft means two things: either not in shape and you need to be leaner, or you don't have enough muscle. So, um, 
you know, the, the girl on the left here, again, going back to the girl on the right, someone on the overall. So the girl on the left here, I, I think she just needs some more density to her glutes, right? To get that pop out that we see of the girl on the right. Um, you know, this was also the case, again, going back to Pittsburgh between um, Elisa and Giselle. Uh, I don't know if you watched the show or anything like that with wellness, but um, Giselle was, was significantly softer and, yeah. and people were like, I don't understand. Well, and from viewing it in person, what it looked like to me is it looked like Giselle has been trying to streamline her physique. Like she's been trying to bring her muscle down in her legs and things like that. And in the process of doing that, she's lost density from the back. So mm -hmm. she doesn't have, she hasn't lost density from the front. She's lost it from the back. She was pretty soft. Like you just didn't see that full pop. Now there was a few shows last year with Giselle where she actually, I felt like she wasn't tight enough anyway. I felt like she needed to be leaner. Um, and, and this year I felt like she has actually downsized muscle and it's not that she needs to be leaner, but she just lost that density that gave her the pop. So that's what we're talking about. She was soft, but in this scenario, I don't think it was a leaner necessarily thing. I think it was a, she needs to get that density back in her glutes to fill everything out. You know? Yeah. That's so somebody again, might be questioning, how would you know, right? How would you know the difference? If you know that you have completely filled out and you look like the left photo, this yeah. means you need more muscle because you can only right. fill whatever tissue you do have. That's um, right. Now, if you go to the show and maybe you left some con or uh, fullness on the table, you know, the coach says, hey, you know, I really didn't push food or I, I mm -hmm. think we could have left a little bit of room. Then maybe you go to a second show, you push max fullness to see what that look is. You have nothing to lose. And if you still are kind of looking like this, then you know an off season is needed. So that's kind of how right. you would de decipher between the two. Right. And that, that, that would be me like this last year with Hawaii and Japan, you know, Hawaii, I was really full, but that's also because I had a lot of water on me for my cycle. And then right. once I was in condition for, for Japan, that was the fullest I could get in Japan. That was the, the, the hardest that I could get in Japan. I need more density. I need more fullness in my glutes and my legs. So I'm going to look a little soft because I just don't have the muscle there. Right. I don't have right. the tissue there. So throwing more carbs at it isn't going to make me harder. It's, it's going to, I'm, I'm just going to spill over and look watery at that point. Right. You know, so that's the difference. And, and you, sometimes you don't know it until you get on stage. Sometimes you don't know it until you see it, you know? So going back to what we were just talking about, the more pop, usually this means that you need to fill out either with food or, or and or water or more muscle literally what we were just talking about. And this one's really clear. You can see the difference in the two. Now, obviously one is wellness and one is bikini. So that's the difference here too. You're going to have more muscle and wellness anyway, but I mean, you can see the clear difference in the pop. So for anybody that can't see it, the girl in the wellness is popping like crazy. The girl in bikini is not, she's, she's, she's flat. Right. So what else do you see here? Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, again, the, the, criteria is they want a very bubbly full look so mm -hmm. um most of the time on the amateur league this means just more muscle you know more glutes yep. more glutes more shoulders more shoulders and we hear that all the time but that's what they're looking for but when this when you do become pro and you are on the pro level pop is something that i heard over and over and over and over again in my mm -hmm. feedback the girl you know yeah you have to think the girl that's winning like they, they are out there, right? Like their eye goes to it and it's just eye catching. So that's yep. where that pop comes from. Yep. Um, it just gives you that like action figure type look, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's 3D. You know, it's you know, if you're looking at, if you're looking at, we, we always use the terminology of a raisin versus a grape. You know, if you take a raisin, it's all shriveled and you take a grape, a grape is a raisin with water in it, right? A grape, a raisin is just a dehydrated grape. So yeah. it's the same situation here. You're getting a raisin on that in the bikini. You're getting a grape in the wellness, right? That's it. So that's what we're looking for. That 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 push out. And again, with the grape, it's not just water too. It's the it's the actual juices inside the grape, and everything like that too. That's filling all that everything. Out. Yeah, yeah. That's a great analogy. So, um, we want to be grapes. We want to be grapes, not raisins. Yes. <laughs> that's it. So this, yeah, this is another uh, another. Um, piece of feedback that you would get. So these two girls right here, one of them is Brittany, which we just saw on stage this past weekend. Um, they won the overalls this year, this, uh, this show. And this is better proportions. Um, you need to look more like an X. You need to build more or diminish your lower body or upper body. This is the exception is wellness. So, um, you know, this is the, the X frame and then obviously bikini is the S frame. So uh, we, we want that shape from the top to bottom where it just kind of flows together in that, that curve, right? Versus we were talking about with wellness, we want that 
uh, lower body dominance. So this is something that that the judges can give as a as a critique as well. Um, and if you are off on the proportions, that means usually, like you were just saying, we need more shoulders and we need more glutes, whatever it might be, in order to create a better S or a better X. Um, anything else you wanted to add here? No. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows with bikini, they have moved away from the term X, as you just said. Mm -hmm. So you could see yep. it very well, Brittany, the S frame. Mm -hmm. So that's the shoulder into the waist, the waist into the glute. So a lot of times when I'm, you know, taking on a client or I'm, you know, reviewing uh, photos for the first time, you know, the first thing I look at in that front pose is how much S curve do we have? Because that tells me how much more we need to build and where we need to build. And for most women, that's in the glutes. We need that glute yep. projection or that density in order to complete that S curve. Um, mm -hmm. So a, again, that's one of the major things that's graded in that front pose. So if one of your goals on that consult call is that you want a pro card. That's what we are working towards that look in right. that front post. That's right. That's right. And so that's, that's, you know, that's another piece of, of uh, critique you could get. Um, so I pulled mm. this photo for the dropping of the glutes. This is something that I think I have a hard time. Um, but most of my clients when they're first getting into this, don't understand what this means. Uh, you know, cause I'm trying to teach them how to do the walk to the back and things like that. And you know, do the transition so they don't drop their glutes. Okay. So what this is, is uh, it can mean two things. You either need to build more glutes um, and more, most probably you need to work on your posing and your transitions, right? So in general, most of my clients that I work with, if they pose correctly, their glutes are not going to drop, right? Um, we may have some ladies that have dropped a lot of weight. So they've got a little bit of loose skin, things like that. But what we're talking about when we're talking about dropped glutes is we're talking about seeing like a little line underneath your glutes, between your glutes and your legs, um, as you're going through the transitions, as you're walking to the back. One of the biggest mistakes a lot of girls make with the walk to the back is they kick their pelvis forward as they start walking. And it automatically, if you stand up straight, those glutes are going to drop. I don't care how full your glutes are. If you stand up straight, your glutes are going to drop and you're going to see that skin fold. It just is what it is. That's anatomy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's all about keeping those glutes up and tilting that pelvis and making sure they stay high through every single transition and step that you take. Um, looking at this particular shot here, I, I pulled this one because they were all in transitions and you can see pretty clearly the girls that are dropping their glutes. Um, these are all, this was, this was one of the, the last call outs in one of the, one of the bikini classes. What you'll find too, it's, it's, it's interesting. When you look at the photos of like the first call outs at nationals, you'll see most of the girls transition almost in sync. When you get to the lower call outs, you see this, you see a lot of variance because they're girls that haven't been either taught properly how to pose or they haven't practiced enough or whatever it might be. And there's just their, their transition transitions are just kind of all over the place. And you can see that here. So Great what else point. do you see in this? Yeah. No, what every day I was, I was noticing all the same things, how out of sync they all are. And you're absolutely right. You know, on the pro league and in the top call outs at nationals, everyone moves very in sync. The cadence is very similar. The, the transitions are very similar, you know, and I was going to ask you what call out this was because you could tell here mm -hmm. that unfortunately none of these girls are ready to go pro yet just because simply yeah. of the posing and the, and the, the transitions. Um, yeah. and, and a lot of people don't understand, just like you're saying, the dropping of the glutes and what that means. And unfortunately, it has a lot to do with body awareness is knowing what an arch is. You know, it's not a push. Yeah. It's not a lean. It's nothing like that. And that's what most of these girls are doing in this type of call out to try to give glutes that maybe aren't there or they just simply do not know how to do an anterior pelvic tilt. Um, yes. And mobility. They, some girls just can't get into that anterior pelvic tilt. Number one, they didn't focus on mobility for whatever reason. Their coach didn't look at that, something of that nature. Um, so the way that I say this simply is if you have a yoga wheel and you're doing the yoga wheel, that's the arch that you need to try to get yes. from the moment that you get on stage. It never drops. Um, Absolutely. And just like you're saying, anatomy-wise, like as soon as those hips tuck, I call it the Urkel. As soon as those hips tuck, <laughs> you're you're – bringing that skin under that. your glute uh, hamstring tie-ins together and you're getting that yeah. skin fold when it's, when the, the hips are elevated, it's stretching that, that tissue or that skin back there. So it just has that nice smooth look and that's going to give that pop that we need in that back pose, but it's not from pushing. It's just from arching and having the tissue already there. You can't post yes. tissue that's not there. That's yep. why off seasons Absolutely. are important. Yep. And that last piece too also is conditioning to hold your poses because I see that a lot where girls can go through the routine once 
and they're good. But you're going to be going through these comparisons for 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long they need to, in order to see who's going to screw up. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. Sometimes they're just waiting for somebody to lose it. So if you can't hold your, your pelvic tilt for 15 minutes, you're, you're at a disadvantage. You're in trouble. You're, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're at a disadvantage. You need to be doing it for longer than you think you could possibly need to do it on stage because yeah. it does make a huge, huge difference. Um, because the other thing you have to remember, too, is that when you're on stage, that adrenaline hits and it's automatically going to feel tougher. <laughs> it's going to feel harder. It's going to feel 20 seconds is going to feel like 20 minutes. You know what I mean? So you have to be ready for that. I, I always liken it to when you're going to the gym, like when you first start a new exercise, you're going low weights, lower reps, because you just don't have the stamina built up to be able to do anything more than that. But as you get better at it, you increase your reps and you increase your weights because you're getting better and you're being able to train your muscle to take more. It's yeah. the same thing with posing. It's the exact yeah. same thing with posing. It is. Exactly. Yeah. Because, and because if you can't do it off stage, you're going to blow it on stage 100%. on stage, mind and muscle connection just takes over. You got the lights in your face. The judges are looking at you. Breath rate starts to increase. If you haven't already been practicing that you're in a world of trouble. Um, yep. that's something that I do, you know, as we get closer and closer to stage, I have a video that I send all of my clients with Sandy's voice. It's a comparison round. I tell mm -hmm. my girls to identify with one person. When that person moves, yes. you move like they do. If they're switching, if they're walking and and it allows them to practice what a true feeling of a comparison round is. And that video yes. is about four and a half to five minutes long. And that's about an average comparison round at nationals. If you're not yep. practicing that, you are going to be in a world of trouble when it comes down right. to, to stage time with these larger classes at a national level. Absolutely. Because that's, you know, like you just said, larger classes, usually these local levels, it's like maybe, you know, five, 10 people, maybe. So like you have two call outs, maybe. So you're off stage in five minutes. It's not the case when you get up to these higher levels. Not at all. Not no, at all. When you have it's, 30, it's, 40 plus girls in your class. Yeah. It, you're, you're up there for eight to 10 minutes easily. Yeah. You know, I, I sit and I do commentary at these shows and, you know, Pittsburgh pro was what, 22 girls, however many it was. And so you got to think they go through their individuals. Yeah. They're not out there for the entire individual, but they've already done first looks. First looks takes a good five minutes per lineup. Then they come out yeah. and they do their individuals. Then they come out and do comparisons. They do comparisons at least once. Usually the top two comparisons are going to do it twice. So you're out there. If there's four rounds of that plus two more for the doubles. Now we're looking at, you know, let's say five minutes for each one. We're looking at a half an hour to 45 minutes on stage for comparisons only. Yep. It adds yeah. up so fast. It adds up so fast. And if you can't time. hold it, yeah, if you can't hold it, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> you're That's screwed. very exhausting. That's very exhausting yes. when you get off stage. I know everyone can feel that at any level. Like you are absolutely yep. exhausted. You know, Sunday after a show day, you feel like a truck ran over you because you you were literally flexing and holding for mm -hmm. 30 minutes on stage twice, you know. So and I don't I don't know if they still do this, but muscle contest used to always make everybody stay out on stage after they did their individual. So like I can I can remember it was Pacific USA's and it was like 2000. 18 or something like that. Um, Masa, her last name starts with an A. So she's always out on stage first. So she does her individual, has to go over on the diagonal and stand there the Hold entire on. time. The yep. entire time while everybody is doing their individuals. It's like and something that people don't think about too when you're in that top. Here I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna vent for a second. You are in yeah. the top <laughs> corner of the stage. There's no forgiveness. You're literally mm -hmm. in the judge's lap, it feels mm -hmm. like. And you have the lights for the stage right there, like on your mm -hmm. forehead, like it's hot. There's no hiding. Like sometimes like when there's like 15 girls on stage, I'll try to move like to the back line and like let a girl <laughs> take that spot. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's hard. It's very, yeah. very hard. It's I hard. hate when they make you stay on stage the entire time. Agree. You don't get that like little break in between. That's like everything. If you can get a break. It really is. <laughs> it really is. And especially with some of these pro shows being over 30 girls now, you know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. freaking crazy. It's nuts. So some of the stages don't fit all the girls when they bring them out. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know for real. That's how girl yeah. power was. Everybody was on top of each other, right? <laughs> girl power. And there was another one too. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So this is the next one. It's coming tighter, which can mean two things. It could be build more muscle or most likely you need to drop some more body fat. So this is, we kind of talked about this a little, but you can see here, this girl has really good shape, but she just doesn't have, she needs to pull more body fat off. You yeah. Know, she needed to come in tighter. Yeah. With the coming in tighter for her, it's not more muscle density. It's more pull Body that fat. fat off. Yeah. Pull that fat off. So that's pretty clear right here. Um, let's see what else we got. 
I'm in Fuller. We just talked about this. This is the girl we talked about in the uh, when we had her next to the wellness girl. So she needs to pop more, right? She needs more muscle in the mainstream or legs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. This is more food, more water, more muscle right here. You know, so she just needs more size in general, but she also needs to fill it out and make it pop out. So, yeah. Um, so the next one spilled over. So this is a fun one. <laughs> I hear this one a lot. And we were just talking about this with the body fat versus the water. You know what I mean? So it's a myth. The judges will never tell you this. Only social media, poor carb loading protocols will do this. It basically means that you ate too much, held water, and didn't diet hard enough for long enough. But as for judging feedback, I've never heard a judge actually say this. I've never, never heard a judge tell a, a competitor <laughs> that they spilled over. I've never heard that. Now, you may have, but that, again, goes back to, you ate too much, you drank too much, or you just didn't pull off enough body fat. But what the yeah. judges will tell you is the get leaner or the conditioning, or you need to fill out, or you or you know those. They're not going to say you spilled over. No, but you. your coach might say that knowing yes. the protocol they did with you. Yes. Um, and then if they feel like they pushed too much carb, didn't pull back what whatever they think, and they were like, hey, I act, you know, I spilled you. You know, that's what that means. Yes. They, they yes. overdid the carbs and the water, and there's only so much of that. That, that the muscle can hold internally, that it then just goes out into the, you know, the bloodstream and, you know, the superficially under the skin. So that's what right. spilled is. But just like you're saying, there's that difference between what the judges say and then what your coach would say, this would be more of like a coaching term, not any feedback from the judging panel. Yeah. And I, and also like, this is just a pet peeve of mine, but you hear a lot of people say this like on social media, when in reality, all they really need to do is just diet a little bit more. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like you, you didn't spill over. You just didn't pull all the body fat off. There's a difference. Yeah. I know? will say like, yeah. it's a very, very small amount of time when a coach says, Hey, I spilled, you know, like I spilled yeah. the athlete. Um, most of the yeah. time they just needed to diet down a little bit more. Yeah. Yep. You know, and a good example again was this past weekend. So one of the girls I worked with her presentation, um, she came in very good, but I felt like she could have been a little bit tighter from the back, that kind of thing. Um, so what her coach did was on after the show, he was like, just go eat whatever you want tonight. Let's see what you look like tomorrow. And her glutes looked better the following day. They actually did because she filled out. She had a bunch of food and all that kind of stuff. But her waistline was blown out. So that would be a situation where, yeah, you could have pushed the fullness on the glutes. But in doing so, you would have blown her waistline out. So it actually wouldn't have wouldn't have been a better look. You know, so that would be a spilled over look. If she would walked on stage looking like that, she would have looked spilled over. So that is the yeah, challenge as a coach. So much of the time is that preserving the waistline while trying to fill out everything else. And right. that's why it's so important to add tissue. Um, yeah. You know, because some girls in order to get that pop, you have to feed them so much, but then the integrity of the waistline, the waistline gets blown out. So Absolutely. just like you're saying, the glutes look great, but the waistline looks mm -hmm. huge. Um, so that's, Absolutely. that's about, you know, really knowing that athlete and, you know, coming up with strategies ahead of time, like front loading or, building more muscle in the off season, but that is that tough, tough balance. Absolutely. And that's what I said to her, I said, you guys did the right protocol going into the show. I said, because I don't think you would have looked as good. I just don't think so. I mean, you, you just need to be tighter in the glutes. And once you're tighter in the glutes, then you can fill it out a little bit more and your waistline will stay, will stay tight. Absolutely. So you just need to drop a couple more, a couple more pounds of body fat. When that's gone, you're good, you know? Yes. So they did the right protocol going into the show, but it's kind of cool to do that experience, ex, um, experiment too. So um, this is something too. So tighter skin, this is fixable to an extent. Um, you can add more muscle to fill the skin out or surgery and cosmetic procedures. There's certain things that you just can't fix unless you go get it surgically taken care of, which is what it is. You know, um, we could sit here and sugarcoat it and say that it doesn't matter, but it does, you know, at the end of the day, it does. Um, if you have a little bit of, of loose skin underneath your glutes, a lot of times you can fill it out with muscle, you know, but when we're talking about something like this, when we're looking at the waistline, you can't fill the waist, waistline out with muscle. You know, that's a, that's a mommy, mommy tuck, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that happens. You, you had a baby. I mean, that's, that's part of life. You know what I mean? Extreme so, weight loss. If, we see that all the time in this sport, yes, which is such, so great. Absolutely. It's, it's such a beautiful thing. You know, unfortunately there is residue, you know, that comes from that kind yeah. of, of extreme. Um, and just like you're saying, you know, if it's something that's really bothersome to you and if that's, this is the sport that you want to continue, then yes, there might have to be something that you have to do surgically for that. Yep. Cause there's just nothing you can do once it, once the skin elasticity has worn out, there's no putting it back, you know? So the this good is a great is before we, and after, <laughs> right? I know. Yeah. Right. Even the belly button looks good, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, 
you know, there's there's certain things you can do. And it's amazing that we live in, a, in an age now that they can fix this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So you, you talk about this, you know, 50 years ago, they couldn't do this, you know. Right. So um, so you have options now. You do have options. There's other things that are that you can do, too, like Morpheus 8 and things like that that don't involve surgery to an extent. You can help to, help to um, tighten things up. But um, like you said, if this is something that bothers you, this is something to consider. This is something to consider. So um, better flow. So this is in relation to your physique or your presentation, your hair and makeup, your suit and your posing. So better flow in general. They talk about your flow from your head to toe. So every aspect of it, your presentation does get judged. We've talked, to, talked about this a thousand times as far as your hair, suit, makeup, tan, all those kinds of things. Those things can be um, good for you or they can be detrimental to you as well. Um, this particular girl, I picked her photo out because her flow was perfect. Like her presentation from top to bottom was, was stunning when she was on stage. So she's got really good shape as far as like her, her, um, balance is concerned from her shoulders to her glutes and everything like that. But her look too was very clean. It was very glamorous. It, it like the, the suit was very flattering on her. All of those things. This is a beautiful flow. You know, I talk about this a lot when I'm talking about the girls in the, in the pro league and stuff like that. Like, you know, they could have had a different suit color or their makeup could have been a little bit bolder or they could have been done this or they could have, you know, I talked about Elisa having too bright with a red lipstick with her red suit that I loved everything else about her presentation, but her lips were just, were just distracting. That's part of your flow. You know, if, if something knocks off that flow and I'm looking at that one thing, that's a problem, right? Yeah. Her, for her, that flow was the red lipstick, you know An what outlier. I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> correct. Yeah. So if there's something that my eye goes directly to, then that is disrupting your overall flow. Right. So any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, everything you said is, is spot on. Tan is, is part of this too. You know, if mm -hmm. you didn't really do the job on your tan and you're in that comparison round and you're lighter than everybody else, that's a bad outlier. Um, I, I'm not a fan of red lips on most girls. It takes a very specific look for that. And yes, that's what my eye goes to a lot of the time. Um, mm -hmm. and just like we said, you know, before with that other comparison round and that last call out, like you have to remember when you are showing up to a national stage in particular, you are asking for a pro card. You are trying to be a professional. So everything that's listed on this slide is a part of your control. And this yep. is something you should be perfect with mm -hmm. your hair, your suit, the color, the flow, the stage presence, the, the polish. It all has to be 100% because you have complete control over this. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And I was thinking about that too. And it's, it's, it's trendy too, because going back to wellness from Pittsburgh, Giselle had this really bright pink, like fluorescent pink lip too. And it was very distracting. But if you talk about that, like five, 10 years ago, those kind of colors and makeup were very trendy. And like, everybody was wearing them. Everybody was wearing really bright lips and like the dark smoky eye and stuff like that. They're not doing that right now. So you have to be aware of what the trend is as well, because the trends do change. So yeah. if you're, if you're doing something that they did five years ago, it might not be right today. It might've been right sure. then, but it's not right now. It's not right yeah. now. So, um, okay. Let's go to the next one. And so this is another piece of feedback you could get, which is changes in posing. Sometimes this means just changes to your poses. Sometimes this means practicing more to execute your pose as well. So you can see here, like some of these girls, like the reason why I picked out this particular photo is the girl in the center. Um, it looks like she's in a transition and she's not. That's that's her front pose. That is her front pose. So <laughs> what I mean, that, that that's a really easy fix right there. Right. So what do you what do you see with that girl in the center? I mean, just comparing her to the girl to the left of her in the green suit, right? Like that's more of a, of a bikini uh, S shape, right? So there's, mm -hmm. there's no yep. S shape here. Um, there's no balance. There's, I don't see her back shoulder. Her front yep. arm is covering her. I mean, it's, there's so much, there's so much wrong with it. Right. And, yep. and I really do appreciate that the judges have started commenting on things like this because, you know, I'll post clients all the time and they have these uh, bad habits and I'm expressing mm -hmm. to them to fix mm -hmm. the bad habits and the importance of it. And they don't. And then yep. we'll go backstage yep. and, you know, the, the judge will say, hey, like that transition is really weird. You should be hiking your glute. And I'm like, thank you. You know, and when yes. the judge says it, then they, they're like, oh, Jordan wasn't just harboring me on this. This yes. is important. Um, so I'm, I'm appreciative that they've really started to start commenting on polish and suit and, and um, uh, posing. But yeah, there's just so much wrong about this, you know, and, and um, this is yeah. unfortunate because this should have been looked at by a coach ahead of time and been like, yeah, this is not it. Because I, gu I guarantee what she thought here is she thought she was accentuating her glutes. That's what oh, she yeah. thought. 
you, Absolutely. You, you can tell by the way she's pushing into it. She looks, she yeah. thinks that she's making her glutes look better. And I don't when, see any in reality. <laughs> no, in reality, she's completely, she's completely hiding them more than anything else, you know? Blown so all I yeah, see is absolutely. really is this lat and like side mm -hmm. boob. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we, you know, we as competitors, this is again, why you need to have coaches because we as competitors look at ourselves and we see the things that we want to fix on ourselves. We don't see the overall package. We don't see yeah. the overall look, you know, we get too minutia focused. I do it on myself. I'm like, I want to see my front glute pop more. So when I do that, I only focus on that. I miss the rest of my You lose body, everything else. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So you need, you need to make sure that you got somebody again, that knows what they're looking at and that you listen to them. This is something that I love that Amy talked about last night on the, on the, um, my live feed. She said, what has been made her so successful is that she just listens to Jamie blindly because she trusts Jamie in her eye. And she's like, and I just don't look at myself. I don't even look at my photos. I just send them to Jamie and I do what she tells me to do, you know, because she knows she, that Jamie sees her the way that, that, that she's supposed to be. You know, so that's, that's, she's like, she's attributed that to her success because she's had, she has such a student mentality on that regard. And I, I would agree with that. I would hundred percent agree with that. So absolutely. Um, what do I have is the last slide here. I don't even remember. Oh yeah. So this was, this was at, this was at CCTS. This was my final slide from CCTS. So, well, we'll just get rid of that. We were doing, we did actual in posing, in person posing at that point. So there we go. Perfect. Awesome. So um, was there anything else that you wanted to show with your photos that you sent no, me? I think that was good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So, you know, that kind of goes over I'm, and I'm sure there's terms that we missed as far as things that the judges say and, you know, different feedback and all that kind of stuff. But was there anything else that maybe we didn't touch on that you wanted to, to mention? No. Drew's being loud back there. Yeah, Drew is being loud back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you okay. shaking? Like a shaker cup? <laughs> <laughs> Drew, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> He's in a mood this morning. Oh, uh, it's okay. Is he at his period like me? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Day before okay. travel. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Men get their periods too. Trust me. I, I get it. Yes. I understand. Been, been with my husband for 16 years. Trust me. I understand. <laughs> you get I it. Him, I know. I'm like, I got to give him some peeps. <laughs> That's it. Maybe, maybe he needs an average potato. I don't know. Go, go put him in the freezer now. <laughs> know, right? For real. Uh, where are you guys? Where are you guys going to? You go to Junior USA's, right? Yeah, we're heading to Charleston yeah, yeah, yeah. for Junior USA's. Okay, yeah. awesome. How, do you you have clients in it, right? How many clients do you have? I have one, um, and Drew okay. has two, uh, three. Okay, I'm interested to see what the what the numbers look like at that show. So, um, yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah. Well, we'll have, we'll discuss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause I'll be, I'll be in New York. I know I'll be in New York. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll be in New York. Sean and I are going back to work. What do you see? What do you yeah. see? What do you what see? Do you see? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot, there's a live for junior USA's too, right? Yeah. There's there a live is. feed? Okay. Yeah. But they, is there usually, there's not usually, did they have one last year? I think this is new. I think this is new I this year say, for like, live I don't feed. Remember. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember either. Yeah. That's funny. Because I, I think that's I good. remember here pro that everybody was like texting me they're like where were you like where are you? yeah i think this is newer okay yeah because i know i know because shanika won her pro card the year before the 2020 year and uh and they did not have a live stream because I, yeah. I, was, I was not there i was in good I job trey good job <laughs> i know right <laughs> i know right i think i was in new york for that that year where was i that was 2020 i don't remember it that was year the was theaters. It was in the yeah, I, I know I was there. I was at another show. I was at a different show. I don't remember which one it was. So, mm -hmm. oh, that reminds me, I will be on live commentary for DC Pro Am. So I'll be on the live. Oh, you will. For that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I just I'll talked to Jason this past weekend. Yeah. So I just talked to Jason this weekend, and yes, I'll be on the live stream commentary for that show. So, cool. um, so that'll be fun. So I enjoy that show a lot. It should be it should be pretty big. I've got a, I've got a handful of girls doing it. I know that they're going to have some decent pros doing it. They always do a I good five. job with their production. I have five in that show. Yeah. 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 So that's gonna be a fun weekend. Um, but other than that, yeah. So, um, what's after New York? I don't even know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> what's after New York? <laughs> I don't know. What's after, uh, Junior USA's, uh, clash, clash Orlando the following weekend. Then mm. Nevada state, then DC. Okay. Yeah. It's coming up quick. Oh, God. We're already from, that, from, from, now till, <laughs> from now till basically the olympia i'm like gone every week i know <laughs> i look i looked at my my calendars yesterday as i'm looking at my, my appointments and i told you i always set my start of prep day so like my 16 week out mark would be tomorrow so i'm just like 
<laughs> like, Enjoy today. So technically, I know. Like technically, tomorrow is my my start of prep. I, you know, that's the thing. Is like we talked about this before. I mean, I haven't dropped weight. I started to drop weight, and then my period came, and all this kind of stuff. So it's like, oh my god. I'm like, but it's 16 weeks. So I'm like, I'm really actually ahead of the game. So I need to stop. I get, I gotta get out of my own head. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have so time. yeah. And at the end of the day, too. Everybody's asked me all, all weekend at Pittsburgh. They're like, so what show are you doing? I'm like, well, I've got September 7th on the schedule, but there are a billion freaking pro shows between September and November. So mm -hmm. I could really pick whichever one that my body is ready you for, want. really. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not stressed about it. I'm going to do what my body needs to do and make sure that I bring my best package that I can. So, and that's it. <laughs> That's all we you got, we got control other, the we got, controllables. <laughs> yep. Yep. We got bigger fish to fry right now. So, um, so that'll kind of do it for us for today. Do you have any other, anything else that you wanted to add before we, before we log out for episode 38? Nope. See you guys next week. Awesome. Yeah. We'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming next week. Yes. Um, Thursday, Thursday again. So we had a couple of, yes. and I'm sure we'll, we'll have to amend it as we go through the season as usual, but uh, that's what we do. So with that, go get yourself a medium banana and an average potato and <laughs> like comment, subscribe and turn on notifications and all of the fun things that we always have to do in order to support, uh, support the sport, support us. Cause we're cool like that. And yeah, Behind the Bikini, episode 38. We're out. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>